Never give up. Without commitment, you'll never start. But more importantly, without consistency, you'll never finish. Keep working, keep striving, never give up, fall down seven times, get up eight times. Whatever this because you passed enough tests that he knew you could handle it now. Because he's going to show up in your life in a way that he's never showed up before. And yes, you may have more trouble, but you're going to have more glory, more anointing, more blessing, more wisdom. More of this means more of that. So when you see all hell breaking loose, understand that the angels are coming from every direction. You have to trust God. When he says no, the saddest thing I have ever seen is a wasted opportunity. I've seen people misunderstand the opportunity, pollute it with arrogance or self-aggrandizement and lose the opportunity. That most people get caught up in the distractions of life. Look around and praise God, because whatever you've done is on the tip of the iceberg possible for you. Yes. Look back. Thank God. Look around and praise God for all the possibilities, all the things that is looking at you, waiting for you to take advantage of. Expand your vision for what's possible for you to decide that you, your, your circumstances are not going to define you. Make a decision. This is a pivot point. This is a deciding moment that you've had it living life as you've been living and you want more because you deserve it. You deserve it. Keep some things for you. You don't have to share it if you have a relationship problems to the world. Work on it instead of sharing it. Update your problems to God, not people. Finding validation in them, you already been validated. What they say, what they like, what they comment shouldn't make you feel special or unspecial about yourself. So stop letting people make you feel different. Stop sharing all of the visions and ideas that God sends you. Do it. Stop trying to talk people into what God told you to do. Just do it. You're pretty much not doing anything that hasn't been done before, but sometimes, in most cases, God will send these individual bold visions you end up letting people talk you out of something that's inside of you that you're supposed to do. Every thought that we entertain produces a chemical in our brain that impacts the body's immune system. So just for good health and peace of mind, let it go. Any feeling of resentment or anger or hatred is called to me the load of bitterness within. So. So if you wear Christian Louboutin, and if you wear Gucci, and if you wear Nike, then you must be somebody. No! You cannot have a possession-based understanding of who you are. Give me that job, it'll make me important. If you weren't important before you got it, you won't be important after you get it. One way God vindicates you is he promotes you in the presence of your enemies. He doesn't do it in private, but in public, so that those that left you out, they will see you promoted, honored, in a position of greater influence. All of you hanging out with all these random people and you gifted and talented, they cannot contribute to your ultimate level of success that you're on your way to. They can't inspire you to go to that next level because they're not even on your same level of thinking. Greatness is not popularity. It's not how many Twitter followers you have. If you get busy worrying about, does everybody know how good I am and how great I am, you'll sacrifice your greatness for popularity. Greatness just does what it does, and people discover the greatness. They see it in you. We must set up our inner boundaries, or our thoughts will be confused. And with confused thoughts, we'll end up being confused, hopelessly lost. Uh by not being prepared, you make the choice of getting caught in some of life's unpleasant circumstances. Failures, personal losses. By not being prepared, it's your choice. Now here's the other side of it. 
By being prepared, you increase your chances of success. When things go wrong, they always seem to happen at once and they just come out on top of each other and it's it's pretty easy sometimes to to feel beat when you're faced with all those issues and all those problems and they all hit you at the same time let me tell you that doesn't mean give up it means it's time for you to fight harder to dig in means it's time for you to go on the war path what do you want what do you see for yourself look ahead what do you see for you look beyond your circumstances expand your vision become clear about what is it you want what is it that you want for your family what is it you want for your health look around at your environment does it feed you does it fuel you does it motivate you does it inspire you or does it drain you does it deplete you is it compromising your power your circumstances very important if you take yourself and you put yourself in a new environment, new genes turn on in your nervous system. They encode for new proteins. You're full of biological potential that won't be realized unless you move yourself around in the world into different challenging circumstances, and that'll turn on different circuits. It's that by exposing yourself to different environments, you put different physiological demands on yourself all the way down to the genetic level, and that manifests new elements of you. Because you take yourself out of your dopey little village, and that's just the little bounded you that everyone knows and that isn't very expanded, and then you go somewhere dark and dangerous, then while you do that, you have adventures and they toughen you and pull more out of you, partly because you're becoming informed Time and change are the raw materials of life. These are two things you can't stop, and they keep moving. And they build your life. Time and change are building blocks. In other words, time and change are the only com commodities in life that every human have in common. All of us are given 24 hours every day. A lot of people are just showing up in life. A lot of people just get up in the morning, go to the job just to pull a check down, watching the clock coming in. So you want to be a different kind of person as you forward your life. If you're going to do it, it's worth your time, your energy. You've got some expectation from this. I do not let people waste my time. If there's considerable time that passes between the moment of awareness and the time of our implementation, then that is called procrastination doing it tomorrow instead of today an almost exact opposite of discipline the voice within us says get it done discipline then says do it now tomorrow and always until finally the worthy deed becomes instinctive doubt comes from the suffer it comes from a loss it comes from fear it comes from the sacrifice and so just remember this, you're supposed to suffer and sacrifice. What are you willing to risk in order to make your dream come true? Nothing ventured, nothing gained. You're gonna take a risk, maybe it's financial. Maybe it's a risk of looking bad. Maybe it's a risk of failing, of falling on your face, of going broke, of going through anxiety. What are you willing to risk in order to win? You're not doing it for their sake, you're doing it for your sake. That poison is contaminating your life. When you release it, you'll step into new levels of freedom. Is there something you need to let go of? Bitterness, anger, how someone treated you? It wasn't right what they did, but you're forgiving so you can be free. Dreams motivate us. Dreams energize us. In all of your getting, get a dream in your life. A dream is the inward picture of the future you desire. And don't act like it's not important. And when God is going to do something in your life, He'll give you a picture first on the inside of where you're going before you ever get there. And He says, live into that dream. Use your power to change things, not to complain about your situation. Use your power to recreate things, not talking about where you are. Use your power. 
because you've been given authority and dominion over everything. Exercise it. Don't give it away. Look at here. What is it that God is calling you to do? What's in your heart? Because where your heart is there, your treasure is also. What's in your heart? That's a calling. You were created on purpose with a purpose. You're still here regardless of what you've gone through. You're still here regardless of what you've done and all the things that you've done that you shouldn't have done. You are still here for a purpose, for God's purpose. You can change whether or not you go for the skills, multiply your value by two, three, five, ten. That you've got charge of. That you have control of. You don't have control of the constellations. Learn some new skills. You have control over that. What's the biggest problem? What's causing the most stress? Explain where you are at. Be blunt. Be upfront. And then give them the simple plan of how you're going to get things back on track. You give it to them straight. Right? You're falling behind at work. Talk to your boss. Face it. Tell him you're going to get after it. And tell him that you're 100% committed. It won't be easy. It will be hard because life is hard. That's what life is. I know people do things that hurt you. Everything is not fair and everything is not just and everything's not right. Sometimes you've done the very best and you don't get selected and you don't get the opportunity. You cannot afford to get bitter because if you get bitter, you will never get better. You got to get that out of you. If you got to throw it up, if you got to pray it up, you got to get it out of you. There's a curse on it. There's a curse. You got to get it out. 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 He left you. He cheated on you. But get it out. Get it out of you. Get it out of you. So you go ahead. That's the character test. It's like, what do you do with messages of error? Here's what not to do. I am a bad person. I might as well just go jump off the bridge. It's like, no, that's not good. Because what that means is that every time, every time you try to learn something, you're going to make a mistake. Because what do you know? So you're going to make mistakes. And if the rule is every time you make a mistake, you're going to go jump off the bridge, then that's not a useful problem solving strategy. And so when you make a mistake, you don't get to beat yourself to death with a club. It's a bad strategy. These challenges that you face, they're going to do their best to take you down. Let those challenges raise you up. Let them elevate you. Let their demands and their trials make you strong. Stand up. Dig in. Line up those problems and confront them. Face them. Fight them. A man should live fully. Be alive. He should be glad to get out of bed in the morning. He should be doing a job he likes to do because he does it well. My years in the newspaper business have convinced me of several things. Among them, that people are basically good. And that we came from someplace, and we're going someplace. So we should make our time here an exciting adventure. The architect of the universe didn't build a stairway leading nowhere. But for this whole process to work for us, we must first master the art of discipline, self-discipline. Consistent self-discipline. It takes consistent self-discipline to master the art of setting goals. If we don't make consistent self-discipline part of our daily lives, the results we seek will be sporadic. Become aware of what your needs are. Develop compassion for yourself despite your human defects you will never be perfect you will never be perfect you're human you've made a lot of mistakes it takes a consistent effort to truly manage our valuable time or we'll be consistently frustrated our time will be eaten up by others whose demands are stronger than our own you can't be in price tag mode what's it cost what's it cost what's it cost you never get what you want decide in advance what it's going to cost Successful people don't negotiate the cost of something. They negotiate whether it's worth it. If you're a person who's always thinking about what it's costing you in the sacrifice towards your dream, you're always going to be negotiating it. I used to be broke. And I might be broke again. 
but nothing lasts forever. To everything there is only a season. Whatever your season is right now, it cannot last. There are two things that may be said of everyone. Each of us wants something, and each of us is afraid of something. Perhaps you'd like to double your income or make a specific amount of money. It may be a beautiful home. It could be a more harmonious family. Each of us wants something. Think about it in a cheerful, relaxed, positive way each morning when you get up and immediately you have something to work for, something to get out of bed for, something to live for. No second chance. No, what would I do differently? Choose one or the other, but both will have their price, the price of discipline or the price of regret. You see, the discipline that it takes to make your bed every day is the same discipline necessary for success in the world of business. The first lesson of discipline is that it isn't the easiest option. The second lesson of discipline is that it's a full-time activity. If you keep hanging out with negative people, it's going to infect you with fear. Stop filling your mind with negative words from television, internet, social media. Decisions that you make and you can't always have everybody approving of what you know you're supposed to do. And the sooner you understand that, the sooner you'll do great in life. You cannot have the approval of everyone and be great. You're always going to live your life at the lowest common denominator of your friends if you don't watch it. When you receive the message, when you receive the confirmations that these people that are around you are sucking you dry. So how could you have any love left inside of your heart to take care of your kids or your family when you got these people around you that are sucking you dry? Ah, uh, I got nothing left. I'm going down, I'm melting, I'm melting. So feeling safe and feeling secure is very important to me and I think it's very important to every single person. I think that God created us to feel safe, secure, confident, and bold. Your soul maybe has it blocked, but God did not create you for fear and worry and insecurity and a lack of confidence and extreme shyness and extreme timidity. You will become whatever you cultivate, whatever you feed, that's what's going to grow in your life. I'm saved, but I got to change my diet. I'm saved, but I got to change who influences me, who speaks into my life, who feeds my mind, who determines what looks good on me, who determines what I can do and who I am. What's wrong with you is all those people who knew you win, because if they knew you win, they'll hold you to back then. I got to go. Too many people looking for identity and value and they're looking for it in all the wrong places. They look for it in what they do, who they know, what they own, what they look like. And I think that we need to do our best to look as good as we can. All I can say is take what God's given you and do the best you can with it. But don't be comparing yourself with somebody else. I become confident when I get the right view of other people and I get the right view of myself. It's amazing, right? You ever notice that arrogance requires advertising? But confidence speaks for itself. In fact, insecurity, cynicism, and arrogance, they're all loud. But confidence doesn't even have to speak. Because confidence isn't based on your words. Confidence is an action. It's an ability to step into the moment and say, I'm not backing down. I'm not quitting. I got my confidence back and I can fulfill. Your tongue is the rudder for your life. It's determining the direction. Next time you're tempted to say something negative about yourself, your future, and your finances, zip it up. Don't steer yourself toward defeat. Say not you're too young. Say not you can't accomplish your dreams. God wouldn't have given them to you if you weren't well able. Why are you living a life to impress them? Why are you placing value on what they think? Doing all these things to impress them. Why? I'll tell you something right now, man. You need to place value on the people who love you at your worst. Because those are the people who deserve to be there when you're at your best. If you don't heal from emotional wounds, you will bleed on people that had nothing to do with it. 
How many people are living wounded over how they were raised? A friend that walked away? Instead of letting it go, they replay it in their mind. They wonder why they don't have good relationships. It's because they haven't healed. They're living out of a wounded place. Isn't it amazing how one bad relationship can ruin all of your other relationships? For really being honest tonight, most of the pain in our life, it comes from relationship pain. Some of the hardest things for us to get over, they're attached to people. Despise not the day of small beginnings. And so many people say, when I get a big break, when a big door opens, when somebody notices me, but that is not the key to success. The key to success is to start where you are, right where you are, not when things get better, but start where you are. The only thing worse than one who is inconsistent in applying their self-imposed disciplines is one who has never considered the need or the value of discipline at all. Changing loyalties and shifting frequently from one commitment to another. Leaving behind a trail of broken friendships and unfulfilled promises. All because of a discipline that was either non-existent or imposed so infrequently that it was ineffective. People who do not line up with how you think about yourself. The mind then becomes the battleground. The mind, Satan is always trying to do battle to take over your mind with warfare. Some of you are fighting your thoughts right now. I want to begin the process of deserving. What would that be? What process should I begin engaging in to deserve good health? to deserve a good relationship. What must I do to begin the process of deserve? There's enough people that are telling us we can't do it, that we're not good enough. Why do we want to tell ourselves that? We know for a fact that thoughts influence actions. We need to get our own self-affirmations. There need to be quiet moments in your bedroom, quiet moments when you're brushing your teeth that we need to reaffirm I am the captain of my ship and the master of my fate. If you don't know who you are, you'll discount yourself. They go, oh man, I'm ordinary. Nothing much to offer, nothing special about me. Now life will try to make you feel like you're anything but amazing. Disappointments, betrayals, rejection will try to steal your sense of value. But all through the day, despite what thoughts are telling you, despite who left you out, you need to remind yourself, I am amazing. I have been wonderfully made. Don't go around feeling ordinary when in fact you're extraordinary. People may try to make you feel average. You don't have much to offer. Are you going to believe what people say about you or believe what God says about you? You're amazing. Have you ever said that to yourself? It has to start on the inside. If people can understand that as long as they don't forgive, they're poisoning themselves. It's like me being mad at somebody who hurt me that's out having a good time and don't even care that I'm mad. That doesn't hurt them. It's pointless. It's like, okay, you hurt me, but now if I'm going to hate you, then I'm letting you continue to hurt me. And you're controlling my life, and I'm not going to do that. It is your values. It is your ethics. It is how you make choices that get you promoted. It is not your strength. It is not your talent. It is not how you fight. It is not how you draw. It is not your intellectualism. It is your values. So that when you are backed up against the wall and you have to make a decision, true leadership is how you make decisions in the moment. What do you care the most about? Being seen or being connected? Doors of opportunity are open to those who continually knock. So we don't find open doors of opportunity because we need them. We find them because we deserve them. Only those who knock deserve to find an open door. It's as if you search, you will find. Finding is reserved for the searchers because they deserve it. Now, at first they may have needed it, but they now know that just needing it is not sufficient. The reason why you're going to be blessed with good ideas is because you've come searching. And for those who search, they will find answers. To find a good idea, you must go look. Does a good idea interrupt you? So we get not what we need, but we get what we deserve. It's as if you ask, 
someone has an answer. If you keep asking, the answers belong to you. So we don't get what we need, we get what we deserve. Living in mourning is going to keep the new doors from opening. You have to heal so you can see the new relationships, the new opportunities. And the quicker you let things go, the easier it is. Your time is valuable. That's a distraction trying to get you off course. But this is a verse you must remember all your life. It says, man's days are determined. That means you don't decide how long you live. Your life is on a timer. Extreme environments will turn you into a different creature. Extreme environments will make you move differently. It can happen in the midst of a dark depression. Even in the middle of a gut-wrenching heartbreak, in the midst of unimaginable loss, it can happen. My question to you is, what's about to change inside of you that's going to make people think you can defy gravity? It takes discipline to plan. It takes discipline to execute our plan. And it takes discipline to change either our plan or our method of executing that plan if the results are poor. It takes discipline to ponder the value of someone else's opinion when our pride and our arrogance leads us to believe that we are the only ones with the answers. What are your expectations? What do you expect to get from life? What do you expect to get from your relationships? What is your ideal day? What is it that you expect from this journey that you're involved in? People that have a strong sense of self-approval, they have high expectations for themselves and from others. I must be great. I'm pretty. I must be great. I have this validation that comes from stuff is never God. I'm really rubbing the grain. Y'all with me? Are you still with me? You can't wear a watch until who made it. You step on the runway. What are you wearing? You got everybody's name on you but your own. So no one is better or less when it comes to time and change. You become what you are by how you use your 24. You have no idea how strong you are. You're not in this thing, life by yourself. But one of the things that I know about this thing called life, recognize what had happened, the role that I played in it, I had to keep it moving. Got to keep it moving. Each of us must live off the fruit of his thoughts in the future, because what you think today and tomorrow, next month and next year, will mold your life and determine your future. You're guided by your mind. You have built-in greatness. You have built-in power to handle whatever life throws at you. And life is going to be throwing a lot of stuff. Nobody's going to be spared. That's why Viktor Frankl called it unavoidable suffering. But suffering is a choice because you can suffer or you can choose to do whatever you need to do to overcome whatever you are stuck in right now. Never underestimate the power of influence and associations. And never underestimate the power of your own consistent self-discipline. Sleep late, show up late. Waiting is always easier than acting. Imagine what life would be like if we didn't have to make our bed in the morning. Wouldn't it be fascinating if we didn't have to do these things? What do you suppose would become of us? You're right, not much. One of the great distractions of chasing our dreams is this thing that goes off in our head as we're negotiating the price we're paying. Is it getting too high? Is it too much? And you'll have people in your ear, it's too big a sacrifice. You're going through too much. It distracts all your focus. You can't be executing and negotiating simultaneously. So negotiate it now. Negotiate it with me now. What are you willing to pay? For me, when I'm after something big, as long as it's legal, ethical, and moral, I'll sacrifice everything else. Greatness is not income. On the other hand, poverty is equated in, to greatness in a lot of people that, that if they have nothing, they must be great. 
and neither one is true. You're not great because you're poor. You're not great because you're rich. Your greatness is not based upon your income. As ye sow, so shall ye reap. It's the realization that your limitations are self-imposed and that the opportunities for you today are enormous beyond belief. To use all your courage to force yourself to think positively on your own problem. To let your marvelous mind think about your goal from all possible angles. There's some stuff you need to clean out and clear out in your life. Some activities, some relationships, some things, some events, some wrong thoughts, some misconceptions. Mental, physical, emotional, spiritual rubble in your life that you need to clear out. What's the rubble in your life? It's the stuff that keeps tripping you up.